Millie and Eileen, congratulations on your recent Oscar nominations uh, in the sound editing category. Eileen, you're actually a double nominee for both sound editing and sound mixing, so double congratulations to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, tell us, how did, it, how did it feel when you got the news that you had been nominated for an Oscar? Um, I couldn't believe it at first. I, I was in shock. Very happy shock, but it was, I looked it up online. I woke up in the morning. I was too nervous to, to wake up at 518 when they announced it. So I woke up in my usually time at 6, and I looked at the, who was nominated, and I, I stared. I couldn't believe it. So that was my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, Eileen, I mean, you as a double nominee, um, I, I mean, you uh, did you feel like you had a 50-50 shot at getting nominated either way, or or did you? Um, no, not, not at all. I mean, like, since, like, I've never been nominated before, um, uh, I wasn't too sure um, how things were going to end up being, so um, I don't know, I was r really nervous, uh, and um, it was totally unexpected. Um, um, so I was still really surprised, and I, uh, similar with Millie, you know, I was just so nervous that like I just couldn't stand like being up at that early to work it. So I kind of rather, yeah. So I kind of was in bed, and then until my phones just started text, like getting like text messages from friends and stuff. So, uh, so yeah. So it was uh, it was a really pleasant surprise, and you know, it's a uh, it's a big honor, you know. Because that's like always like so much so much good work out there, you know, from everyone, all the hard work um, on so many movies. So we're just you know feeling really lucky that we are part of this movie and it's um, people are liking it. I have to say though, I I had been looking at Gold Derby and I did see that for mixing it was on. It seemed to be like packed on every list near the top of the list. So I thought maybe Eileen had a pretty good chance. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know that you, you check our odds. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I was wondering where all those page views were coming from. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so uh, since you're, you're nominated in both categories, Eileen, and, and Millie, you can give us some insight into this too. Oftentimes our readers are curious what the difference is between the two sound categories, editing and mixing. Um, give us some insight into the distinctions between those two specific uh, areas? Well, I'll start with editing first because that's typically the first process in the post-production sound uh, for features. Um, so in sound editing, um, when the filmmakers are still editing the picture, um, at, at some point, the sound editorial team gets brought on. Um, typically, you know, a sound supervisor, uh, you know, um, or a designer, whoever, um, would start, and um, they would, you know, talk and uh, sit down and talk to the uh, filmmaker, the, the director, to spot the movie, um, to discuss ideas on um, how the sound can be used to help, you know, for further enhance its the story, and uh, so we, the sound editorial team, basically uh, dialogue, ADR, effects, backgrounds, and foley work that gets put in. Sounds get cut in or recorded or cleaned up from the production dialogue, and um, so all that comes together to be a basis to be then be mixed by a mixer. And then so the mixer would come in and um, gather all these tracks and um, kind of shape things and see you know, what's more important to play where uh, or to clean up the dialogue um, um, and stuff like that. And um, basically, you know, um, put the entire soundtrack together. And so typically the mix part is the last process. Um, off the sound, post sound, um, yeah. Right, um, and in the case of a movie like La La Land, a, a movie musical, what are some of the challenges that are presented in uh, editing and mixing the soundscape of it? Well, um, in musicals for me, uh, this is the third musical I've worked on, and for me in musicals, it's the transitions between the um, dialogue scenes, the scenes in real life that then transition into the musical numbers. Some music, in La La Land, some of the musical numbers 
were rooted in reality and others were fantasies. So you have to, but you always have to make the transition and you hope that this transition is somewhat seamless and almost subconscious. And so that I know in a lot of older musicals, even as a little kid, I could tell, um, oh, it sounds different. They're about to start singing or, you know what I mean? You could definitely sonically hear the difference between the regular dialogue and the singing. Right. So that's one of the challenges for me. Yeah, and so, um, no, to tack it on, so uh, to help support the, the seamless transition between like spoken dialogue, production dialogue to the musical numbers, um, you know, uh, we'll have um, effects or backgrounds, uh, real grounded sounds, um, and fully um, there and slowly uh, blended in um, gradually through the musical number um, with the idea that, you know, hopefully it would kind of trick the audience into thinking like, you know, it's all um, <clears throat> not coming from a studio, clean, clinical studio space. Um, but, you know, um, with La La Land, you know, um, a few of the songs were, actually, were fortunately, you know, uh, recorded live uh, with live vocals that uh, ended up used in the movie and that really you know helped um make things more real and um, more in line to what damien's um looking for in this um the sound of the film and that's a unique thing for for songs and musicals to be recorded live on the set i mean generally speaking they uh, are recorded uh beforehand and then the mm -hmm. actors um uh mime it on the set. Can you talk a little bit about uh, more about the benefits of, of recording it live? Well, it really helps in very emotional scenes. So this, this when um, Emma Stone's character Mia auditions at the end of the near the end of the movie, that was recorded live, and in it she gets very emotional. And she, in terms of how they breathe and how the emotional emotionality in their voice, and they start to even maybe cry a little bit. That is so hard to um, either mime to or, you know, do post-production, you know, to do it after it's shot. So I think for, for emotional scenes like that, like in Anne Hathaway's number in Les Mis was a similar thing. It was that, well, all of Les Mis was recorded live, more or less, but that one song, songs like that would be very difficult, I think, to do to playback. Yeah, it's almost like her, it's like a mon monologue scene for her, but singing. Um, so it was really, you know, good that, you know, it all turned out um, sounding good and clean and usable for um, the actual film. Right. And I guess it also sort of uh, creates a, um, you know, like the great thing about seeing musicals on Broadway is that you're seeing them live and, and it feels yeah. like it's all happening for the first time and uh, yeah. gives you that kind of experience in a movie. Um, when you talk about the, um, the crucialness of a good mix in a movie musical when you're dealing with the uh, lyrics and the music and balancing those out. How tricky is that? Well, uh, Andy Nelson mixed the music in La La Land and he could describe it better than we can. Yeah. But, and he's a master at that. He's he done many, many, he did, he did Les Mis as well as Evita, many um, Moulin musicals, Rouge, Moulin yeah. Rouge. Um, so one of the challenges though is making the voice sound like it's in a real environment. Yeah. Especially if you, it is something that was recorded in a recording studio. Yeah, and for this film, you know, uh, I think um, for Damien, he wants to make sure, you know, some of these like um, singing musical moments, they don't sound too Broadway-ish. So more kind of a raw, natural quality to the mix. Um, so as not to, like not overly processed and stuff, so. Um, yeah, and for me during the mix, um, I was more involved in uh, mixing the effects fully and backgrounds, kind of um, that end of the mix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, give us you know, tell us a little bit more about what foley is for people who may not understand what that is and, and how crucial that is uh, yeah. in a film. Yeah. Um, so foley, you know, typically uh, besides just being, re, uh, no, creating like footsteps and stuff. Um, there's also like props, um, 
or um, sometimes um, even like uh, uh, down to like uh, how do you say um, like uh, um, a cr if it's like say a crash a, uh, a heavy vaccine you know, for like car crashes and stuff you know they they also create like metal wrongs or you know uh, create very uh or, or like rubbing dry eyes on uh, metal to have like this um tonal metallic sound but uh in terms of la la land uh for the foley it's is crucial uh, because it um not only help uh enhance certain movements uh during some musical numbers it also helps um like i said uh before uh it grounds them um even like say on certain musical numbers that we've used that are pre-recorded in the studio. So it can give you that feeling like um, they are singing, even though the songs may be pre-recorded, but it gives you the idea that they are singing there um, on set. Um, and um, for La La Land fully, um, we gotta be like, uh, we have to make sure, you know, a lot of the fully they are in rhythm um to the music and the sound and the tone the pitch of the sounds uh they don't clash with the music so they maybe you know being somewhat in tune to the music so that we can play them um um and uh such as like for example um in the scene the duet scene uh early on in the movie where amia and sebastian um uh, was walking uh, on uh, in Griffith Park uh, looking for uh, Mia's car. Um, so um, during that dance sequence, um, we had to replace their dance footsteps because we couldn't use the production sound, mainly because when they were shooting, they were playing, they had music playbacks. So we needed clean footsteps. So in that scene, um, in that case, um, the original choreography they were uh, flat so flat soul choreography and midway through the post-production process Damien had this great idea he thought maybe we should make it tap shoes um, to help enhance um, the dance sequence so um, which is a brilliant idea because the sound of the tap shoes you know it can be a lot more musical than flat soul shoes and it plays better against the music and so we enlisted Mandy Moore, who is um, the choreographer for the film. So her and her dan you know, her dancers came to the Foley stage and um, Damien wanted the, that classic Fred and Ginger sound, tap sounds. So uh, we referenced uh, a few um, movie clips from them or like from Top Hat to, um, and then so we experimented with like different shoes and different surfaces so even they were dance even though they are dancing on asphalt uh, we ended up like having them dance on like wooden floors um so they have the resonance and stuff and so after that you know um i would take it and added it to the rhythm um um of their dancing and the music and um and after that like damien was very specific in like what sound to play up or what scrape to play or what not to to feature and then we play for Mandy to make sure like for a dancer's point of view they would buy that Foley sound that um, you know um, that it works uh, for a dancer in that scene. It's really amazing how much of this stuff is created after filming. Yes. Stuff. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> you know, things like that that you might not even think about when you're watching the movie. Like they didn't, you know, record that for, I mean, for whatever reason, you have to record that afterwards. Um, yeah, even though, you no, know, um, um, Emma and Ryan, they did like an awesome job um, in that super long take of dancing. You no, know? but yeah. So the sound hopefully should help em um, enhance the scene. Absolutely. Um, you know, this movie really has uh, taken off in, in quite a way, 14 Oscar nominations, including uh, your guys's. Um, <laughs> why do you think the film has had such a huge impact on people? Hmm. Um, maybe, hmm. well, for me, um, 
one of the reasons I loved the, I fell in love with the film immediately from the first moment when I started working on it. I just completely fell into the movie and fell in love with it. And I think for me, it's because I feel like I'm a, I'm, I'm a fool who dreams. So that song where Emma Stone sings, and I think there are a lot of people who have their dreams and it kind of reminds you about that, about having a dream and, and going for it and how sometimes you might achieve your dream, but it, it's not going to be perfect and there's going to be some sadness involved. So it's, even though there's a lot about the film that's, that's there are parts of the film that are fantasies, it, it's very real for a lot of people who try to do something different and try to reach out and achieve their dreams. Uh, but it's also, I think, possible that um, right now people need some, something like that to remind that uh, about their dreams. It has a, you know, a good blend of like highs and lows. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it takes you through so many different emotions. Um, uh, and in a way, you know, it can be so personal for some, for a lot of people. Um, so I think also it, because it is an homage to movie making and to the history of cinema, especially the history of musicals. I think if someone loves film, they will resp they can respond to this because it reminds you why we love film and it reminds you of all the beautiful films that have come before like singing in the rain or the umbrellas of cherbourg yeah. um so i for me as a, a film lover it works for me on that level as well absolutely um lastly i don't know if you were aware of this or not but you were the first female duo to be nominated in the sound editing category um, so in addition to your nomination, you'll always be a nice piece of Oscar trivia. So uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it. I didn't know it until yeah, I read it online. Yeah, that yeah. I, I had no idea we were the first. So it, I, but I found, I found it a, like a delightful, uh, fact that that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, congratulations once again, and, uh, thank you so much. And, uh, it was a pleasure talking with you. Great. Thank you so great. much too. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you.